Hello, my name's Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church service for August the 8th. That's right. We are in our second weekend in the month of August, and we're so glad to have you join us today. Now, before we do anything, we need to open our time with a word of prayer. So Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word of God, and we thank you for the spot time that we're going to spend together. We ask your blessing upon this service and also as well the songs that are sung and as well, Lord, today, the word that's presented. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to invite you to our in-person service. It is at Cornerstone Hall. We meet at number 6 Tashi Street in St. Albert. Our doors open on Sunday, uh, of course, today at 11, uh, at 1045, and our service starts at 11 a.m. We'll start off with a great song from uh, Ben Fielding and as well from Morgan, Reuben Morgan called Mighty the Save. Everyone needs compassion, but that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. It is because of the Lord's mighty compassion and his mighty ability that we, of course, are saved. Now, what I'd like to do right now is spend some time with the Word of God with you. Now, we're looking at the book of uh, Psalms, Psalm 111, and we're looking at verse number 10. Now, before we do anything, let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for the word of God. And we ask that, Lord, over the next few moments that we have together, that you would bless your word 
bring it to our uh, remembrance and show us something special. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the last little while we've been looking at uh, Psalms, Psalm 111 in particular. Now, let me just summarize for a moment what Psalm 111 is all about. Here is Ezra. He has uh, basically given us an acrostic poem or an acrostic uh, psalm. An acrostic means that uh, basically you take a truth and then you present it with some sort of uh, uh, truth. Now, uh, basically what he had done was he, he was returning from the, from the area of Persia, and there was a whole bunch of returnees with him, and his responsibility was to reintroduce them to the Hebrew language, to the Hebrew culture, and to the Hebrew religion. So he chose to do it in this form, and that was that he would take the Hebrew alphabet, which was the best form for him to be able to bring them the Word of God. Now, Psalm 119 is the perfect example. When you read Psalm 119, and you look at it, and it says all the different uh alphabets, uh, different letters in the Hebrew alphabet. It's the same way with this wonderful Psalm 111, Psalm 112. Now, Psalm 111 is all about who God is, and then Psalm 112 is our response to God. So he says this, he started off with praise the Lord, and he will end off with he is to be praised forever. But he begins with saying this, the way to become wise is to honor the Lord. Or he says, the, uh, in some translation, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You become wise when you have a healthy respect for God. Now, wisdom basically means this. It means that you, um, you have the ability to be able to know what to do with the information and also as well the situation as it is developed. We all have information. And all of us have understanding. But how to use it, that is real wisdom. Now, Ezra says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, what was he doing? He was re-emphasizing what Solomon had said in four different areas. But the most famous, of course, is Proverbs 1.7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Solomon had discovered in his relationship that it was the one thing that he needed. When he was went to Gabeah to uh, honor the Lord at the beginning of his ministry, the Lord came to him in a dream and says, what is it you want? And he said, Lord, I want wisdom to be able to lead your people well. Well, the Lord was so impressed with that, that he gave him not only um, uh, wisdom, but wealth and as well honor. So Solomon learned that it was the fear of the Lord that gave him uh, was the beginning of wisdom. Now, let me pour, uh, bring you to a, a wonderful portion of Scripture found in the book of James for a moment. James chapter 3, James writes there, he says, listen, he says, you want to know what wisdom really is? He says, I will give you a definition of wisdom. So listen to what James says and when he talks about wisdom. He says this, and it's found in verses number 13. He says, there are among you who are wise and understanding, and there are, and it's always done through good living. He says, uh, and they prove it. But in your heart, you can become jealous, bitter, selfish. You can sin against the truth by boasting uh, of your wisdom. He says, the wisdom of the world is this. He says this, um, wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is worldly and unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, where there is disorder and every kind of evil, but the wisdom that is from above, that wisdom of God, he says, first of all is pure, then peaceful, 
gentle, friendly, is full of compassion, produces a harvest of good deeds, is free of prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is a harvest that produces from the seeds of those peacemakers who plant in peace. Basically, he says, if you want the difference, and he just gave you the difference, he says, there's wisdom from above and there's wisdom that is demonic, worldly, or human. And the difference is quite evident. If we love the Lord, then we're going to show good wisdom. If we don't love the Lord, then we're going to show the wisdom of this world. There are lots of people out there who claim to have wisdom. And there's lots of people who follow the teachers of wisdom. But here is Ezra reminding several hundred years later that it is the fear of the Lord that brings wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. But then he says this, but who has sound judgment? It's all who obey the commands of the Lord. It's those who put the word of God into their lives and situation. It's one thing to know what to do. It is quite the other thing to do it. You know, real wisdom, real application happens when you base your life on the word of God. You know, the word of God is our camp, our, com our compass for life. It's our rule book. It is our guide into righteousness. And he says, when you have sound judgment, he says, you will obey the word of God. You won't just do it. James says, he says, people say, um, you know, it, uh, not just be hearers of the word, but doers as well. That's what James is trying to get across here. And that's what we need to do. We need to be not only people who have the ability to understand, but we also must put it into practice. James says, you have faith? Wonderful. He says, I'll show you faith by what I do. And then he closes it off, Ezra does. He says, he is to be praised forever. He says, praise the Lord. He says, I've just given you 22 wonderful truths about the Lord. I've shown you through the alphabet, and he says, I've delivered this, but I'm going to close it off with the same way that I started with the praise the Lord. So he says, if you want to be wise, understand that the awe and respect for God is where it all starts. We need to realize that he is our judge. One day we're going to have to stand before him and give an account of our lives. He is the audience of one. And the other thing about the Lord is you cannot fool him. God knows everything. And so you may try to justify it or, or, or make up deals. Don't do that. Just simply have a respect for God. And then when you read the word of God, make sure that you do it. And then Ezra says, praise the Lord. And that's our thought for you today. So today, if you do not have a relationship with God, then obviously you don't know the wisdom of God. Today, you know what? It says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that what we need to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. I would love to lead you in prayer right now as Romans 10, 9 and 10 and ask you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Father, today, as we watch this particular presentation, would you speak to our hearts, Lord? Would you bring to us the reality of the word of God and use it in a powerful form, Lord, to change us from the inside out. Right now, we receive you as our Lord and Savior, and we thank you for your wonderful love and your wonderful grace, and we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in just a moment, we're going to pray for you and for your situation. But before we do that, we're going to sing another song, and that song is How Great Is Our God. The Splendor of
our great and marvelous God. Well, it's that time of our service where we invite you to be prayed for. Now, I want to just remind you that uh, our God is a wonderful God, and our God is one who heals. In fact, the Bible says that by his stripes we're healed, 1 Peter 2.24. Also as well, God can supply every need according to his riches and glory. That's Philippians chapter 4. So today, if you have a need for healing or a need for provision, this is that moment. So Lord, today, thank you for your provision. And thank you today as well for your wonderful, wonderful Lord he, um, healing. So we receive it right now. Whether the need is physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family, we bring it to you today with confidence, thanking you, Lord, for your wonderful healing and provision. And we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive it now. Now, we're almost done. But I want to give you a personal invitation to join us if you are in the greater Edmonton area or in St. Albert, we would love to have you join us. You can, of course, uh, join us 11 o'clock today at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, 10,000 reasons. Yes, I worship you.
I want to thank you so much for spending time with me on this wonderful Sunday morning. And now I would just want to ask the Lord's blessing upon you. But before we do, let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for spending time with us. Lord, thank you for this presentation and your wonderful love. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I invite you to our in-person service. It starts today at 11 a.m. Our doors open at 1045, and we are located in Cornerstone Hall in uh, uh, number 6 Tashe Street, in the city of St. Albert. God bless you and have yourself a great and godly day.